Ladies and gentlemen, I would truly be lying to you if I told you I enjoyed making these incredibly long-winded videos discussing drama. Um, it's not something I enjoy doing, and I'll be completely honest with you. The reason I don't is because I just don't like talking for long periods of time. My favorite kind of videos to make are like videos that don't go past like 15 to 20 minutes. As much as I joke about my yapping, talking about things for like an hour or an hour and a half or two literally stresses me out because I do deal with ADHD and I lose my train of thought a lot. And um, when I have to talk at length, for very long periods of time, it just stresses me out. With that said, this is one hell of a uh, sticky situation with Braxophone and Atsu, and I have to weigh in on it. I feel obligated to because I actually already knew about all this shit because Braxophone was, he contacted me after a podcast episode with Tecton. This was the first time I ever interacted with Brax. And he contacted me, uh, I don't know, shortly after that, on Discord privately and he wanted to talk to me about um, feeling isolated and alone in the Genshin Impact community. So he hit me up and we had, a, we had a chat. In fact, if I'm being honest, it was August 11th of last year. So almost six months ago. And in this conversation, he told me the thing that he shared on the internet publicly uh, about Atsu. But he also told me that he just, he felt isolated because he would try to share his theory crafting uh, thoughts on certain characters in Genshin Impact. And every time he would do it, basically in the degree that I do it on Honkai Star Rail, which is, I'll get to that in a bit, but y'all know how I'm just incredibly based and I share my perspectives unapologetically and they always don't align with what every other creator says. He was trying to do the same thing in the Genshin Impact community in that he would get singled out and uh, basically bashed on for just saying what he thought uh, a character could do. And it boiled down to, you know, a hierarchy of who people go to for guides in Genshin Impact. That was the, the catalyst of the conversation, but then it led into this Atsu shit that's hit the internet like wildfire. Um, this dialogue is very important, so bear with me. I've read the, all of this stuff, but I'm going to go over it again in this video because the context is uh, very paramount to the video. And I understand I have to be very careful with the words I'm about to say because um, I'm an influential figure. A lot of these people on the internet come to me because they think I have uh, incredibly um, pragmatic and rational takes. I, people trust me in what I say and when I weigh in on things. A lot of people. I'm not saying everyone does, but I do have to be careful with this because of that knowledge. Um, I am somebody that does not take influence lightly, and I know the degree of danger it can cause to many other people. Now, what I want to talk to you guys about is that Braxophone, everything that he told me in that call lines up with the light novel he, he wrote on Twitter. And that's incredibly important because often at times when you're dealing with liars, things don't add up and they always make the mistake of not telling the same story. I, again, I don't say this shit lightly. If Brax had said something in there that didn't line up with what he conveyed to me on that voice call, I would call it out because it's just the right thing to do. I'm like, yo, oh, sorry, bro. You, you didn't say that shit in voice call. Everything he pretty much said in this lined up with what he said in the voice call. And what sucks is at the time, you all know my, my personality. I immediately was like, bro, Come on to my podcast, talk to me about it in a podcast setting so where the tension can be at ease and you can actually voice your concerns. I was like, I think we can, you know, we can get on, we can get the ball rolling on this. And he was like, you don't understand. He had fear in his heart. Genuine fear. He was like, you don't understand, man. Um, these people, like, they're powerful people. They have very strong connections. They can uh, jeopardize my livelihood. I feel like they've already done this. And he said, I don't, I don't want to, you know, this is my, this is what, how I pay my bills, man. I don't want to end my career by speaking out on this because they're very powerful people. They have connections with people at Hoyoverse, yada, yada, yada. And he was like, you, it, smack, you gotta like, he's basically trying to tell me like, be careful. Little did he know he didn't know he was talking to. <laughs> and that's not, that's not like me trying to act like I'm a hard ass. I am, I am a hard ass, but I don't try to it. It's just who I am. I don't give a fuck about any of that. And that's what I told him. I said, if it was me, I absolutely, I'd be on that ass. But I told him, I said, but I respect it and I understand and I'm sorry that you're going through that. However, I think you do have the option of if you don't, if you feel isolated in that group, then simply leave it and build another group. I did say that to him. 
since you've already been on good relations with me, with Tectone and other creators that are in the Honkai Star Rail community, just start vibing with the other people, man. And I said, but I am sorry you're going through that. But if you're not going to speak up, I can't help you out. That's how that conversation occurred. I said, um, you know, yeah, that's pretty much how that conversation occurred. <clears throat> Brax did tell me, he said, can you, uh, can you please keep this confidential? I don't want it to get out. I get it. He, he, he's just kind of person who just doesn't, he doesn't deal with drama well, and he, he's not vocal. He's not outspoken. Um, so with respect to his wishes, I stayed silent about this whole thing, but it did bother me. Did I believe him wholeheartedly? No, I didn't because I didn't know the guy that well. And it's all hearsay at that point. And he never showed me any receipts or evidence. So that's why it's important to understand the context, because now that he put this out, everything that he told me in the call lines up with not only everything he said, but everything he showed as receipts with the text messages, the pictures and everything. So I now fully believe him. I now have seen enough to know and draw a conclusion that six months time sp uh, span gone by and you, everything you said still, it all makes sense. I now want to go over it together. Bear with me. It's going to be a very long wind, uh, winded video because I have to read his light novel and then I have to read Atsu's light novel and then I have to weigh in with my thoughts and I have to be as objective and rational as I can to ensure that everyone's getting a fair shake. Um, but you guys may have tuned in to me and Tectone's podcast when I brought him onto my channel and interviewed him and I, and I spoke of an uh, Illuminati group and y'all tried to pry and I didn't give anything out. It's important that I didn't though because that's some serious accusations that can affect the livelihood of other content creators and jeopardize what they've worked so hard to build. But I also didn't just sweep it under the rug. I'm not that kind of human being. Um, without further ado, let's get into it. Holy shit. I'm not, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not looking forward to this, but I have to weigh in on this, man. It's, it's very important. TLDR. Atsu hates me. I don't know why. Atsu spreads hate of me to other creators and industry professionals. I don't know why. Atsu uses people to climb the social ladder. Let me put the mouse here. While calling everyone who's not in his circle ladder climbers. Atsu is coming after me and my friends in the open now, and I'm tired of it. I just want to be left alone and not have my career tampered with. Uh, I was subtweeted yesterday. I found out on stream from a viewer since I'm blocked and I'm not able to see his tweets about a grudge, which is absolutely crazy because I had let this blow over for a long time and I was really just letting it go. As I told y'all, he told me about this six months ago and I ain't heard nothing about it since. I haven't spoken to Atsu in over a year, and I don't remember the last time I talked about Atsu. And I've never gone public about my experience either. Now you see why I had to explain my context. I've kept quiet about this for a long time for a few reasons. One, I don't like stirring up drama. Said the same thing to me. Uh, when something involves me, of course, I'm going to respond to it if it's a big misconception or, so or something like that. But most of the time, I leave it alone. Watching other people's drama is fun sometimes, but ultimately, it's only fun if it's not really a big deal and both parties can walk away from it at the end of the day. This is not something that I think would go away quickly and not without repercussions for both me and Atsu. Number two, I'm scared of what will happen to me for coming out with this information. Literally word for word said the same thing to me six months ago. Uh, bridges have been burned without my knowing due to the things that Atsu has said about me that are out of my control. I worried that I might just be straight up wrong. Maybe I was wrong about all of it and it was just a huge coincidence. After yesterday though, I'm 100% sure I was right. All right. In this twit longer, I'm going to compile all the things that have happened to me as a result of Atsu and his influence over the Genshin content space. Uh, I will not touch on other creators' experiences as I don't believe it's in my right to tell their stories and I want to respect other victims' decisions by not going uh, uh, public. But I can confirm that there are others who have had similar experiences showing patterns in this behavior, ladder climbing, manipulation, weaponizing audiences, gatekeeping, and more. Bridges burned before I even knew they were open. Content creators warned about me that I had never even spoken to or about. Hell, even Tectone was warned about me. Tech Tone, the guy who the entire Genshin community consistently rallies against, was warned about me. Now, all of this is incredibly important to understand. The reason he's like emphasizing Tech Tone is because he's trying to say like him, he only makes guides. He's not vocal. He's not outspoken. So why is Atsu warning the most like outrageous and obnoxious individual? By the way, y'all know I love Tech Tone. I'm just I'm being I'm portraying it from an objective and neutral perspective. Why is he warning someone like that about such a, you know, a person who doesn't speak out? It just doesn't add up. Now, the other thing I would like to bring up is that the people, the others, it is important that you not be a coward and it's important that you speak up. I wanted to get to this point later, but we can address it now. 
right now we're in a situation where there's just not enough evidence to say who's who's the who's the bad guy and who's the good guy but what i do know is in many of these situations there's always witnesses and there's always other people right if braxophone is this bad guy others should be able to give an experience that they had with braxophone and say yeah i had the experience he was weird and stuff like that if atsu is ladder climbing, manipulating, weaponizing audiences and gatekeeping and more, there should be others, as he, as he claims, to be able to attest to this. This is the whole uh, concept behind a judge and a jury. I implore you to please open your goddamn mouths and stop being cowards and say, your, and speak your piece. It is incredibly crucial to understanding who is a rat or a snake in this situation and who is being genuine. That said, we can continue on. And yet he was the only one who made an actual effort to be my friend, Tecton, and get to know me. I understand that a lot of these scenarios may end up having a vague details. As I stated before, I want to tell my story without implicating anybody who doesn't want to be a part of it. So here's my story from start to finish. When I first met Atsu, it was an anime in New York City, the year after I started making content on Genshin. He was very kind to me, offered to take a picture, etc. At this point, I struggled a lot with communication and social anxiety thanks to COVID isolation compounding on my already sparse social skills. Skills. <clears throat> Around the time Genshin blew up, I had transferred schools. Since everything was online, I wasn't used to actually talking to people. So my interaction with new people were pretty awkward, but nothing awful, just a lot of awkward small talk. I walked away from that interaction feeling pretty okay with it because Atsu made it feel normal. So I thought we were good. Naturally, I asked for the photo, posted it on Twitter, and that was it. I thought we were on good terms. I don't think I spoke to him again until Anime Expo 2022. In the time between the two conventions, he had held some collaborations with other creators, but I just kind of assumed I was too small to join because as a smaller creator, I assumed bigger creators wouldn't talk to you unless you had numbers. I will say, if you ask any smaller creator, Probably 95% of them have this exact same thought process. There's nothing, there's nothing weird, weird about that at all. He seemed oddly avoidant at the convention itself, though, avoiding spaces I was at and eye contact. Eventually, I went to speak with him because I thought it was probably all in my head. And I just want to make friends and get to know the people working in the space with me. Again, social anxiety was still bad because as a YouTuber and introvert, I never leave my house. This is where I assume things for him got weird because I honestly still don't know what I did. All right. So basically, there's this voice actor who's been a terror to other voice actors. And another VO friend told me that I should warn other content creators that he's been a creep and a terror to other people. So a voice actor told uh, Brax that there was a voice actor who was doing some weird shit. So that's the topic I brought up. So he brought this topic up as an opening to a conversation to Atsu. That's weird. It is. It's very weird. It's like. What are you doing? But I guess that's why he provided this context beforehand to say, to, to, to try to like provide the excuse as to why he opened up with it. He was, he was going into this conversation with Atsu with already anxiety, stress, and the fear of being thought of as a weird person because he just doesn't talk. I don't need to explain that to you guys. I think you understand that anybody who has problems, uh, introverts, problems with talking to other people, they can definitely come off as weird at first. But see me, when I think about this, you know what? We'll come back to it. Let me read. Let me finish this sentence. Looking back, big yikes for a conversation starter. Yes. But the way I saw it, I was just doing what I was told to do. Now, I don't like this part either. I was just doing what I was told to do. Like, are, are you a puppet? Do you have, do you not have capabilities to speak for yourself? You know, like that's me and my masculine personality. I understand though, that many people are like this, right? They don't have the bulldoze leadership mentality to like oh i have I'm my own person I'm my own thoughts yada 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 so i get it but i don't excuse this from braxophone just doing what i was told to do is weird at the end of the day you shouldn't have opened up a conversation with some weird shit like that especially to a stranger i'll, I'll be honest there i'm just gonna give him a fair shake as both atsu and other creators regularly talk to the terror creep voiceover uh won't elaborate because at this point the details are no longer mine to share so he brought it up to atsu because he saw them engaging with this person that was uh, not proven, but hearsay allegedly told to be a creep from another voiceover. Again, all of this is hearsay, so that's that's a sticky situation, man. I can't I can't say, uh, like go to bat for you on that because you you took some information from another individual and and then spread it to Atsu. It's not a good look because it's like you don't even know if that is factual. 
You know, I just, but that's just for now. That's just for now. I'm giving them fair shake. And I told y'all, we aren't going to just be going in here like, oh yeah, bra how dare Brax? Or how dare Atsu? You know, we, we got to look at this from a rational perspective. The convention was very short and we both went about our days, no issue. Uh, when there was an issue, however, was during one of the nights of AX at a party. Before we continue on, I would also like to say that when you do, when you open up a conversation, like, telling about some telling on somebody else in a very negative manner i could see how that can come off as weird to atsu i can't i can absolutely see that because me i'm thinking um this guy is just you know what, what, what is he just trying to like you know make somebody look bad like is that, is that how he starts off conversations like do you get what i'm saying so i'm giving a i'm calling him out on that because that is a, that's a little weird but let's continue on they went to a party and he said this is where things an issue arose or, or is, is a rose a word who cares at this point i had become good friends with jenny yokobori and she invited me to go with her to meet some more of her friends and i was excited to go i don't think she wants to be wrapped up in this at all so i'm not going to at her or anything but you might see her in a couple of photos later essentially the entire atsu genshin click was there i'll be honest that's such an appropriate name it's such an appropriate name <laughs> If you know, you know, that's such an appropriate day, bro. Uh, before I go on, I was completely unaware at this point that people were avoiding me. I thought it might be possible, but I also am hyper aware of my social anxiety. And most people I've spoken to are just fine talking to me. Now, before we continue on, Raxophone is one of the people I thoroughly enjoy going on to Tecton's podcast and being in the same environment as. Uh, he articulates himself well. Um, he's very intelligent. Um, he has humor and personality and he's quick with it responses. And when he opens his mouth, it's always a very good uh, perspective and facet to come from. I Every time I leave a podcast and Brax is on there, I think to myself, Brax was great to have on that podcast. So when I hear this like social anxiety and like he's weird and stuff, it, it, it literally makes no sense to me. I'll be honest. He's so easy to talk to. Um, so I just wanted to throw that in there. Anyways, I tried to talk with Genshin creator folks since that's the crowd I fit best with at the party. And most of them were fine talking with me, trying to fit in. Atsu kept avoiding talking to me or being near me. I want to point out that Joshua and Dish were both incredibly kind and fun to talk to. I don't know who the fuck Joshua is. I do know who Dish is because that's their YouTube handle and I think Twitch handle. Uh, but I don't know who Joshua is. I, I know you guys do. You can comment down below. I don't know who that is. Uh, but I imagine it's one of the content creators, big content creators in Genshin Impact. I didn't feel judged or anything by them. I felt some weird tension with others, but maybe I was just bad at reading things. Uh, often at times, your intuition is telling you the undeniable truth. They probably were being weird. At one point, everyone wanted to get to a, a picture together, and I assumed I wasn't a part of it. But Dish invited me to join them for photos. Now, this is very important, right? Because Dish is one of Atsu's click members. Now, I'm not going to like, this is not me painting them out to be like anything yet. <laughs> what I will say is she's very undeniably close with Atsu. So if she invited him to a photo, that 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 it gets rid of anything that would depict him as weird it does he, he got invited by one of the friends in the friend group i look like an actual skinwalker in them but here's a photo you won't find this on the internet because as far as i know no one used it maybe i'm wrong though so in this photo you know you got all the creators of genshin impact who have made a good name for themselves and you have braxophone back here this is this is a funny photo and then you have somebody's face being covered but this is the photo it's important to understand this photo braxophone is in there there's somebody with their face covered and this is the the atsu click i guess so to speak all right so let's continue on right after taking this photo however atsu brought everyone back for a photo specifically without me in it and there's nothing wrong with wanting photos with your friends but for someone who supposedly doesn't have an issue with me it's very weird for them to take those photos without me and post the versions that exclude me instead i'll be honest that is some incredibly weird and control uh induced shit Th that screams somebody who is a control freak and somebody who gatekeeps. I, I, this is just me giving my true thoughts. When I hear that, 
you went out of your way to take a picture to make sure somebody else wasn't in it. Every single one of you have platforms of exposure ship. So you made that choice to make sure that creator couldn't get any exposure. That's that's messed up. Furthermore, one of your friends told him to go take the picture. I don't see in any way, shape or form how this can be viewed as something other than done with malice intent, done to exclude this person from a group picture, which is wild. It also screams, like I think of these, uh, these incredibly pompous and uh, social class uh, scenarios in anime where you have those individuals who just think they're better than everyone else and they just like shit on everyone else. And then uh, most importantly, they're like, you can't be a part of us. You, you know what I mean? You know, I think of the Celestials in One Piece. That's one scenario that comes to mind. But let's continue on. Now here's where I think maybe some of the hate towards me began. I honestly don't know. There was a girl there I hadn't met who I know, who I now know is the VTuber Saki. When I introduced myself and asked uh, who she was earlier in the day at the convention, she told me, oh, I'm nobody. The rest of the circle of Genshin creators we were in did not elaborate or explain further either at the con itself or at the party. So I assumed she was just there as a friend of another creator who just wasn't interested in talking to me. Never at any point during the party was I told who she was. So this person is quite literally a random or a stranger in the eyes of Braxophone. Doesn't know who she was, nobody told her. Now, I know this is partially my fault, even my lacking social skills that decayed further with COVID. None of my friends had ever needed me to give me the okay to post group photos. I did not think to check with everyone in the photo that they would be okay with it going up on my account, and I uploaded it uncensored without a second thought. Now, I want to stop right here. Brax, what the hell are you talking about? You don't need to ask any of these people in this photo if you can upload a photo to which you were invited to. The very thing about a photo is it is used in today's society to go up on the internet. Everyone on planet Earth should know that you're going to take this photo and put it on the internet. What the hell else is the purpose of taking a photo other than that and sentimental value? You're at a convention. Photos are taken. People should know they're going on the internet. You are not at fault in this regard, in any degree, for uploading a photo without asking people. They should already know that. It's not rocket science. Okay, I had to get that out. That was a little cringe to read. So for a brief couple hours, Saki's face was on the internet, and I got a few panicked DMs asking me to take it down. I took it down as soon as I saw them because I wanted to respect her privacy, and I didn't even re-upload the photo so people wouldn't remember it and put things together. So he immediately took it down, once he realized that this VTuber's face was exposed, which I guess is a big thing in the VTuber community. I'll be honest with you. 100%, if you were to interview 90% of the people in the world and ask them about a VTuber, they probably don't even know these people exist. I, this is not disrespect. What I'm trying to tell you is that it, it may be a big deal to the VTuber community and maybe even the Twitch community, but to the rest of the world, we don't give a flying fuck. That's just the honest truth. So... Brax has done nothing wrong here in my eyes. I, I'll be honest. Nothing wrong, especially because they failed to tell him that that person is a VTuber. How the hell are you supposed to be mad at somebody who just doesn't know, nor do they probably, he probably didn't even know about VTubers. Hell, it just, but I now I don't know if he did, but what I'm telling you is I damn sure don't. I know nothing about VTubers. And if you're at a party or a convention with your face exposed, you are already putting yourself at risk of being exposed. Now, that's not to say that you can't go to events, but just know you're taking that risk. That risk is not to be put onto a uh, Braxophone, especially when y'all fail to communicate to him. So that's, that's annoying, I'll be honest. To this day, I'm still at a loss of how anyone could hold a grudge against me for that, considering that she never told me who she was or that she was a VTuber. But from the lens of, you should have asked to post the photo first, I can understand the frustration. No, 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 and fucking no one more time. It's a picture. What else are you going to do with the picture, my boy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What else? Brax, you're not, you're not at fault here at all. But that's okay. It was a one-time thing and it got fixed quickly. No big deal. Okay. That's basically my last real interaction with Atsu and that entire group. Here's where I learned that I wasn't reading into things too much. I just asked him directly. <sighs> boy, boy, boy. Oof. A lot, a lot of yapping, boys and girls. Hey, dude, can we chat? What's up? Now, this is funny. 
I do this to people that I don't want to talk to. I will respond out of respect, but I will give you the bare minimum response to let you know not to waste my time and that I honestly don't really want to speak. This, this speaks volumes. I know it's just what's up, but I'm telling you, this is the type of interaction you give somebody that you don't really want to speak with. So this already is like fun, a funny, it's a funny interaction for me, but let's, let's continue on. I saw your post on the alt about normalizing, not needing to be friends with everyone in the space. And I think that's fair. I can't even continue further. There's, this is this is about to get this is about to get funny for you guys. This is where this is where Gotcha Smacks takes start to really add value. I saw your post on the alt about normalizing, not needing to be friends with everyone in the space, and I think that's fair. Ladies and gentlemen, we got to take a quick break here because y'all don't y'all don't know. I've been around in this community since day one of Genshin Impact's release. I've witnessed all the drama that has happened, but I wasn't relevant at the time and nobody knew me. However, I was there. Now, I don't know. Knowing Tech, he probably went over every single thing. Maybe. But I'm going to share my perspective. I was there when Tecton and Atsu fell out. I was there for all that shit because Tecton did it live at the time. And uh, he blew a gasket. Now, I don't, I can't say everything word for word, but what I do remember is the falling out occurred because Atsu tried to force Tecton to be friends with somebody who disrespected Tecton's wife at the time. And he did it in a way where it was none of his damn business, nor was it his place to insert himself in that equation to rectify the hostility and the issue that arose between Tecton and this creator. But he was insistent and like in the most going out of your way, unnecessary fucking tactics to try and get Tecton to be cool with this person who Tecton said, nope, they disrespected my wife. I will not be friends with them. Please don't try to force me to talk to this person. I don't like them. They tried to do this, they tried to do that. You'll have to ask Tecton about that yourself. I don't make shit up. I was there. Tecton did not know I exist, nor did Atsu, but I was a viewer and I was there. And what was the most baffling thing to me was how this man Atsu would not stop trying, because Tecton leaked the whole damn DMs. He wouldn't stop trying to get Tecton to be friends with a person. So how fascinating is it to say, he said, I saw your po post on the alt about normalizing, not needing to be friends with everyone in the space. That is the most hypocritical shit I've ever seen considering that context. And Tactone blew a gasket because this guy wouldn't stop. He was, so he was so consistent on it. Like he just kept nitpicking at it. And then eventually Tectone lost his shit and told this guy, pretty much go fuck himself <laughs> that's pretty much what happened and uh so we'll come back to that but it's very it's very important dialogue to this right here it's hypocritical from atsu's perspective i think faking it can be pretty bad okay so let's go back again i saw your post on the all about normalizing not needing to be friends with everyone in the space and i think that's fair nobody should feel like they need to be anyone's friends and i think faking it can be pretty bad i wanted to ask though is there something i did Maybe I'm just heavily misreading stuff, but I'm, I am really sort of felt like you might be avoiding interacting with me. And if that's the case, I just want to know if there's something I did that you uh, didn't, uh, that you didn't like. Okay, here we go. Again, I don't really think everyone needs to be friends. I would like to at least not be on bad terms with people though. So again, from this, from this conversation, man, there's nothing bad that Braxophone is doing. From what I see, he's literally just trying to uh, you know, rectify an awkward relationship that he has with a creator in the space who has connections in the space. Looking at it from purely a business perspective, he's just trying to make sure that there's no hostility, tension, or animosity from this creator. And the thing that's crazy about this, you know what, I'm going to finish what Atsu says first, but the thing that's crazy about this is like, Y'all don't have to be friends to get along. Y'all don't have to be friends to do collaborations or be at the this mutual events. You just have to be cordial and get along. So uh, keep that in mind. 
All right. Hey, Brax, I don't consider to be on bad terms with you, but I do keep you at an arm's length simply because I don't really know you that well. And I found it a bit uncomfortable how eager you came across in trying to befriend me. I don't really mind anything about this. I think all of that shit is fair. I need to know how eager Braxophone is right here. That is that's pretty crucial. But the thing is, all I think about is my interaction with Braxophone on that private call, my interaction with Braxophone on the podcast, and Braxophone's content. This dude is so easy to get along with. That's what keeps driving me insane. So when him, like, keeping Braxophone at arm's length, for what? There's nothing to keep at arm's length with Brax. It's, it's so baffling to me. Let's continue on. It almost felt forceful. Post New York, because it's like, I'm thinking like he's, he's, he's over here. I, I'm sorry, guys, I'm all over the place, but I'm thinking he's like, huh, he ought to want to be my friend. <laughs> like, like, that's what I'm getting. You know, I'm painting this guy in my head and I'm like, that doesn't add up with Brax. Like, what the hell? But he's making it seem like that's, that's what it was. Okay. It almost felt forceful. Post New York City and um wait, wait wait i'm sorry let me go back to that it almost felt for forceful post new york city and even post la god damn bro i don't get an invite to none of these events this shit is wild <laughs> certain tweets and actions i saw over time continued to reaffirm to me that it was probably indeed in my best interest to keep you at arm's length why are you watching this man so closely Tweets and actions? Like, bro, bro, you're drawing conclusions and hypothesis without any actual tangible evidence to this dude being anything. Like, why are you so uh, uptight? And I, I don't know. I want to say just like, why is this man acting like he's a cartel leader and he's not trying to let... He has to be very careful who he lets in. Brother, you're a Genshin Impact content creator. You're not in the secret fucking service of Washington, D.C. protecting the president, my boy. You create content for Genshin, a gotcha game, with a bunch of nerds. What do you, who do you think you are? What do you think you're protecting? <laughs> it's, what are you gatekeeping, bucko? I'm baffled. Please do enlighten me, please. I'd love to hear. All right. While I would like to elaborate more, I can't say in good faith that I trust you to respect certain degrees of privacy or to keep things truly confidential. Bro thinks he's protecting the president or bro thinks he's the president. I'm, I'm serious. Guys, I'm, I'm trying to be fair here. But what the hell is he talking about? What are you hiding? What are you keeping confidential? Like what? This makes this. This is so this is such a red flag for me because I'm just like it screams control freak it screams gatekeeper it screams somebody who's trying to con who's trying to politic who's trying to control uh a position on the board that is advantageous to them and they don't want to lose that position i don't know it's it's weird it's weird i'm gonna say it one more time it is weird <laughs> okay braxophone's response I don't think you're a bad person, but I also don't think I can really vibe with you on a friend level. Now, Braxophone's response. Thanks for the honesty. I'm pretty awkward. And I haven't really gotten used to the parasocial stuff. Bro, this honestly was one of the most disrespectful fucking texts I've seen. Wow. Like, wow. Wow. Huh. I'm pretty awkward and I haven't really gotten used to the parasocial stuff. Moving from knowing of people online. Uh, I got to find it again. God damn it, Brax. Making it hard for me. The parasocial stuff, moving from knowing of people online to meeting them in person is not something I'm good at. And I apologize for making you uncomfortable. What if what a like down to earth response? Generally, I want to at least be on good terms with everyone. And if it helps you feel better about our past interactions, I'm not trying to clout chase or anything like that. That would be far from the best thing for me, my community or you. I was just pretty excited to meet other creators. I really enjoy being friends with most of the creators I know. And I think it would be super fun to be friends with a lot of creators. I don't talk too much. But as I said, I'm pretty awkward, so I get that I don't give off a good vibe. Anyways, thanks again for the honesty, and I respect that decision. If you ever do want to chat, don't be a stranger, though. No hard feelings. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I got to be honest with you. This makes this guy look like an absolute fucking douche. You know what I mean? 
It's like nobody is telling you to be friends with this man. He's not telling you he wants to go over to your house, bake some cookies and watch Harry Potter all day. He's not saying he wants to hang out with you on a day to day basis and in and like, you know, go into your personal life and you have to see this guy. He's literally telling you, I just want to get along with you and make sure there's no issues so that we can go to conventions together and say hi and bye and be cordial. And I can continue to get sponsorships, you know, because we are in the same space. We have to work together at times. I feel like you might be in the way of me climbing up. There's nothing wrong with any of this. I, I, so this makes this dude look like a douchebag. I'll, I'll be honest. I, we will get to his though, and I'll read his. So basically, I'm not on bad terms with you, but I don't want to be friends with you. And I can't tell you why, because I don't trust you. Where the hell did that come from? I really do appreciate the honesty about it, but why can't you trust me? For the record, I don't think it's weird to be like, I don't know you that well. And I can even respect it if you just don't like my vibe, even though I am a believer in giving people an honest chance rather than letting five minutes or less rushed public first impressions mean everything. But where did this thing come from? Where did this trust thing come from? It's a good question. Again, it sounds, Brax, it sounds to me like... It either has absolutely none to do, nothing to do with you, and it's an insecurity, again, a fear of, a fear you've convinced yourself that you're going to lose power or your position, the current dynamic you have with the space you're in, you're in fear of that being lost because of this person. You've convinced yourself that. That's not that mean to say that it's true. You've convinced yourself of that. It's weird, as I said. It was such a strange response overall. And at first, I only told my closest friends about it who's not even involved in this space at all because I didn't want to risk that getting out of hand. I was just confused as hell. Imagine you're told, I don't want anything to do with you on a friend level. And then the Dr. Ratio follow-up hits you with, I don't trust you to keep things confidential. <laughs> oh my God, that shit really is wild, bro. Bro's protecting the president documents, bro. Oh my God. What can you do? Either I keep it to myself and I just have to cope with the idea that one of the biggest influences in the Genshin space doesn't trust me and potentially the entire friend group by extension, or I do exactly what Atsu accuses me of by going to them for clarification and break this confidentiality Atsu implies with his DM and prove myself to be as untrustworthy as he claims. This was quite literally the rebuttal he made to me when I told him to speak out about it in the voice call. I shit you not. Word for word verbatim. And this is why I told you I believe sincerely what Brax is saying in this thing because it all it, it, when liars when liars are bullshitting something doesn't add up there's there's like different parts of the story that like they changed around and it's like just not there's no trail of breadcrumbs he literally said this word for word to me and everything I'm, I'm reading out it was I, I now you have to take me at face value but I think I've proven to you guys I'm not a fucking I'm not a snake and I'm too honest and I'm too bold he said all this shit word for word to me in that call um Okay, so it's a catch 2022. There's no way out. He, he said his word for word to me. If I tell another creator what happened so I can figure out why people don't trust me, I'm breaking that trust. Yeah, he, he literally said this exact shit to me. And I said, okay, fair game. But uh, at the same time, and this is what I told to him. This is important. I said, okay, but Brax, if you aren't guilty of anything, because I didn't know him, you know, so I, I, was, I was taking all this thing with an open mind, not condemning Atsu. I said, if you aren't guilty and you've done nothing bad, then you have nothing to worry about. Speak up. It's okay. If, the, if the whatever happens and you're truly innocent, oh, uh, don't worry. The culprit's going to be looking like an idiot soon enough. But if the culprit's you, then it makes sense why you don't want to speak up. Uh, but what was crazy about that at that time is that he has this fear he's not he's not a he's not a bold and abrasive and you know put your dukes up individual it's not it's not in him so i get it a lot of people out there are like this it's why people take so long to speak up about stuff they just don't have the testicles brax that is a shot at you because it's the goddamn truth you can't be a coward you got to speak up and i'm proud of you for finally doing so because now you're enabling me to do what i do best and weigh in on it all right let's continue 
I end up making a vague twit longer talking about burnout being perpetuated by not having many friends. COVID isolation hit me hard and YouTube is an at home job. So I just felt really alone. It's also worth noting. I was diagnosed with depression and medicated for a while, a few months later, but at the time it was pretty bad. Josh DM me by just extending a hand and being kind as he was, uh, as he was when he met at the part, uh, at a par um, as he was when we met at the party initially. But he also mentioned he has stepped up to bat for me. I don't want to share our DMs out of respect for his privacy. Basically, a very nice message to receive, but I thought it was also weird that he had to go up to bat for me. What did I do? Why was he having to go up to bat for me? What were people talking about that involved me at that point? So again, see, everyone else lets these, lets these fucking kids and creators make it. I don't. I don't respect this cowardice. What do you mean? Like, if those, if those guys don't speak up, I will light your ass up. This is now a situation that goes belong your I don't like trauma and I'm just trying to do my own thing. We need to find out who's full of shit and who's not. Get your little pussy ass on the internet, stop being scary and speak up. I'm saying this is not a game, man. This is people right here doing bad things that need to be caught and held accountable. It's, it's way past this, I don't wanna call people out shit. You guys are children, speak up. Cause that shit pisses me off. You got people who can actually be witnesses and testify to whatever the fuck's going on with, with his hearsay. And they're like, oh, I'm going to remain quiet. It, that shit drives me insane. And you can see I'm verbally bothered by it because it's like that piece of the evidence is so crucial to understanding who's the real victim here. And y'all are sitting in the fucking back with Amber with your mouth closed. Oh, ah. Uh. Continuing on, <clears throat> eventually I said, fuck it. My mental health is more worth it than that. And I told a couple of my close friends, every single one of them thought it was weird as fuck. But one of them told me that they had heard from someone else. They didn't want to name the other one who told them not to trust me, that I couldn't be trusted. And so I asked more friends and another friend told me the same thing, but they also didn't want to implicate who had warned them. Do you see what I'm, do you guys see why I get so, why I get so mad? It's cowardice, it's spineless behavior. I don't respect this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't. You see things are wrong and you're remaining silent. This is the very problem with our world. Cowards. Oh, okay. Speak up. Open your goddamn mouth. Throughout all of that time, exclusive meetups, get togethers, parties, and more would happen. From 2021 to now, they happen at every con and at random Hoyoverse events. Every time I would be asked by a friend if I'm going to that party, that get together, that dinner, etc. And every time I would say, what? Because I was never invited. So I do some digging. Who's putting these together? Oh, lo and behold, Atsu or someone in that immediate circle. I found out that Atsu managed to talk to Hoyoverse into sponsoring a shit ton of creators to go to events. I was told he took a pay cut for it, which is incredibly kind to him. But the idea that he can get Hoyoverse, a company that notoriously does whatever the fuck they want, whenever the fuck they want, Sponsor uh, to sponsor people is concerning to me. Yes, that screams. Wow, this guy has some serious connections. Holy hell. I wonder if he can get me some of those connections or maybe he's preventing me from getting some of those connections. That's what's going on. Naturally, I wondered why I was excluded. I did some more digging and found out that I was explicitly blacklisted from those events. This is the biggest red flag and piece of evidence for me. Allow me to explain why. I was talking to my better half about this earlier. Getting blacklisted from Hoyoverse is not an easy thing to do. You have to be very outspoken and you have to be very based to criticize their game that may not put their game in a good light or put them in a good light because they are doing uh, unethical behaviors. That is an easy way to get blacklisted. Tectone and MTash can give you that personal experience. I am another person who does not, who does not do good. How can I word that? I, I am not somebody who does business the way you should do business. And what I mean by that is certain people will not say things because they understand that that can jeopardize their business. So even if that thing is the right thing to say, they will remain silent. I am not one of those people. So I am somebody who could get blacklisted. In fact, to share my own experience, 
I don't have access to closed beta on Hawkeye Star Rail. I don't get flown out to New York City and all these other things. I don't get none of this. I do receive the tiniest bit of incentive. But I'm not in the Discord anymore because you cannot control me. Even though my, my intentions are always great intentions. And I'm always trying to do what is right. That is one way of getting blacklisted. But it all boils down. The focal point of it is you are somebody who is not going to pretend like everything you say is being watched by Hoyoverse and you have to say nothing but good things about the company. This is what Tecton's always referring to. We don't do this. We just say what the fuck needs to be said or how we actually feel. So that's one way of getting blacklisted. The other way of getting blacklisted is because you did something so egregious in the eyes of the public that Hoyoverse has to cut ties and sever them with you because you would make them look bad. That's another way of getting blacklisted. The only other way of getting blacklisted is someone on the inside has malice intentions towards you. You can't get blacklisted any other way. Now, what I find very fascinating and why I, and this is very compelling and why I say this is the biggest red flag and piece of evidence that this guy probably has connections is Braxophone himself. Brother is not on the internet. He is not vocal and, and uh, outspoken. He is a guide maker. He's never been in any dramas. He only makes guides. So there's no way. He's, he's also never been caught doing anything egregious. So there's no way he should be blacklisted. There's literally no way. Those are the only two ways you get blacklisted as a creator. So if he is blacklisted, that means somebody had a hand in that. Somebody is jeopardizing this man's livelihood and slandering him. I'm waiting on yeah. If you think I'm full of shit on that, well, you give me a better response because I don't know what the hell else other avenue I can go down with that. <laughs> what else am I supposed to say? What else am I supposed to think? How else is he getting blacklisted? Just keep that in mind. Those events were not small. They would say small get together, but it would be every single fucking Genshin creator and also creators outside of Genshin. Almost every one of my friends in attendance of the event that precedes the party, dinner, whatever, would get an invite. And some of them were told specifically not to let me know they are happening. What the fuck did I do? Why couldn't anyone tell me why I was excluded from everything? Because they are cowards, Brax. That's why. That's why. It's that simple. Cowards that are afraid to bite the filthy fucking hand that is feeding them. There's your answer. That's the real answer. One time, when I found out about a party hosted by some Hoyoverse creators through a friend, that friend and the person that invited them got in trouble with the host. Why is it so deep? What reason do you have to try and keep it that much of a secret? What did I do? Why is it such a problem if I even know about it? To be fair, I don't think this party was hosted by Atsu, but it was held by people close to him. I felt like he had a painted a picture of me so foul that people I had never even met or interacted with would go out of their way to ensure they never, ever crossed paths with me. Insane, man. That is still happening. I understand that I'm not a part of Atsu's friend group, but he is inviting every single one of my friends who he's spoken three sentences to, ever. Of course, they're going to go hang out with the cool kids that they, go, they don't get to talk to often. And dancing around me. That means Atsu has apparently found or concocted some reason to distrust me so badly that he'd rather invite complete strangers who he still didn't even try to get to know than me. Remember, at this point, we interacted a total of three times and none of them were conversations beyond five minutes. Yep. Absolutely insane. And this points me towards you. Um, I don't know, man. There, there's a number of things that comes to mind. Racism. Maybe it is because you're white. Maybe Tecton was right about that. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's, a, that's a sketch. But what I will say is I have seen a number of times on the internet where Chinese people will like look down upon Westerners as a whole. Like that, I've, I've, I've seen this happen so many times on the internet. Now, I'm not saying, I'm not saying all Chinese. You, you guys know I love my Chinese people. <laughs> but a number of times I witnessed this on the internet where they try to look down on Westerners. It is what it is. But I mean... Uh, no, that, that's one thing that comes to mind. Another thing that comes to mind is he he's intimidated by your uh, persona. And then the final thing that comes to mind is that like he you saw him do something uh, that probably puts him in a negative light. And he just he will never, ever work with you because of that. I don't know. Now, let's sort of combine this with the idea of Atsu manipulating Genshin sponsors or events. This also applies to some Hoyoverse events because there have been multiple Genshin creators, dinners, lunches, etc. And guess what? A couple new people are invited at random, but the same core people are invited 
every time every time with very few exceptions <laughs> oh what a coincidence but listen to this how strange is it that every single hoyo event invites atsu especially when he is not only not the top streamer or youtuber <laughs> that's okay in genshin or the hoyo space but he's also not anywhere close to the cheapest large creator for them yeah true very true after all, some large creators work for Hoyovers for free. I have been, I have been asked to, to, to keep who confidential. I respect that. So I will not identify them. That, that's completely understandable. Uh, for the record, I don't know what the talk of contracts is about, and I have never said anything like Atsu's choosing what creators are being put on a contract. There was a Hoyovers lunch dinner at Anime New York City one year that I was excluded from, and to be honest, it didn't bother me much since it's just food and hanging out with people. I can do that on my own. But what's so fucking weird is that people called it Atsu's birthday party, and there were photos with a Jong Lee birthday cake and everything. And this guy, context, is obsessed with Jong Lee. So, yeah. Doesn't put two and two together, bro. Was it really a Hoyoverse event, or did a Hoyoverse staff member want to celebrate Atsu's birthday on Hoyo's dime? If so, that makes sense why I wasn't invited, though. So, Brax is drawing conclusions here. And they're fair conclusions. The evidence is incredibly compelling. So it's not out of a, it's not, it's not like wrong for him to do this. This is how you investigate. This is how you actually like be a detective. <laughs> but to be fair, there were some creators I don't think Atsu was friends with. So this is just speculation on my part. And it really was a Hoyoverse get together. Look at this. Rax continues to prove that he's not trying to spin some garbage narrative. I'm serious. He's not trying to spin it. He's just telling you the undeniable truth. Either way, this was just a way to uh, seek into something else I want to talk about, which is Atsu's very close friendship with the Hoyoverse staff member. I'm not going to name drop them. And to be clear, I don't think it's a bad thing to be friends with staff. Yeah, no. But because Atsu's friends with them, they want to do things to help Atsu, their friend, and somehow any event Atsu is invited to sponsor or not. I'm specifically left out. This is something that nobody should like think, oh, that's not happening. He's reaching. Bro, it's, it is something that happens in every business. You have somebody who's in that business, they are going to take care of you because that's your boy or that's your girl. Uh, I had a friend named Andy who was a general manager at uh, Raw Sushi. Brother always took care of my meals in Compton. Why? Because we are friends. That is not weird. If you have connections in certain spaces, of course, they are going to look out for you. So if you have a Hoyover staff member friend, yeah. I bet you are getting hella connections. That makes perfect sense. So don't, don't, I just don't want people to try and say, oh, he's reaching there. I don't know, it makes sense. And I know that Atsu invited, and then everything else, mine's all over the place, ADHD. Uh, everything else, the context provided, draws into this. And I know that Atsu invited specific Hoyoverse staff to those events and parties that he's hosted or helped coordinate because I also have friends who attend and those friends let me in on some interesting things. I'm not going to drop any names in relation to this because I don't want to implicate the uh, share their stories before they're ready to come out themselves. And y'all better come out fast. At one of the parties, a specific creator that he may or may not want to protect caused a lot of trouble for both Atsu and some of the girls at the party. To be clear, this event was not Hoyoverse official or sponsored. Everyone is being told to shut the fuck up about it and not talk about what happened. Typical. Maybe that's what Atsu meant when he said I couldn't keep things confidential. Again, this guy's constantly speculating because he still doesn't know <laughs> what's happening. For all you know, man, Brax, he was just a manipulation tactic to keep you uh, at bay. I couldn't keep secrets about harassment, peer pressure, and more. But what I do know, I wasn't there. I just heard the same story from two different people who were. And those stories also align with other things I've been told by people who were flown out to see the same creator. Why does Atsu not have a problem with it? Maybe Atsu does, but he wouldn't want to come out because this late, that would implicate him as someone who let it slide. As, as logical as that sounds, yeah, I can't, I can't, we can't, we can't draw a conclusion from that. That, that is a stretch. Who knows why, but that is, it's a good logical conclusion, but it's, it's hearsay and yeah, there's no tangible evidence to, to, to make Atsu guilty in that regard. Maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I think that's what makes me so angry about everything. Atsu constantly goes on about wanting to protect his friends, but ultimately it's to protect his own ass. It aligns well with how he became popular creator. Let's talk about his history. Yeah, so I mean, again, it all, draw, it all draws, like this all sounds good, but I can't just condemn the man that fast. I want to hear his side. Uh, back when Atsu was a smaller creator, smaller than me even, he really exploded after two controversies. The first is the Jong Lee fiasco, with him being the only creator to say that Jong Lee was fine pre-buff. And second is the Tech Goose incident. Uh, I won't deny that Atsu worked hard to get where he is, but not without a long, long ladder to climb. And I have a theory about this. I'll get to it in a minute. Um, so I was there a part of all of that. I was there for the Tech Goose incident, and I was also there for the Jong Lee incident when he got on the internet and, and defended Jong Lee. 
Uh, newsflash, hot take. I was also one of the people that didn't think Zhang Li needed a buff. Uh, but my stance on that, not to stray too far from this very important topic, was that um, shield, how much shield duration you have is completely dependent upon how often you get hit. So that is a literal subjective uh, argument. But getting back on topic, if you watch Achu's streams or interact with his social media, skill issue is what I was getting at. He often talks about wanting to get creators together to collaborate on things. But what he seems to mean by that is if you're bigger streamer than me in my immediate friend circle, or specifically a woman, I would love to game with you. It's funny because at this point, uh, uh, Brax is starting to draw a number of conclusions that I wouldn't necessarily disagree with, but there's no tangible evidence. So at this point, I can't really back them. Um, but if I had to just give my own personal opinion, I would actually agree with him based off of everything I've seen. But from an objective standpoint, you can't you can't uh, condemn Atsu because there's no there's no real evidence. At, th at this point, it's in the eyes of the people to make their own opinions because there are so many talented, unproblematic and underappreciated creators who are generally just fantastic people who have reached out in the same day. Atsu would go stream and complain about ladder climbers and people vouching for them. <laughs> so God forbid anyone who's not a bigger creator wants to feel like a part of the creator community and get you an impact. The gatekeeping is insane. Now, here's the thing that I find fascinating. This is something I can weigh in on. Him, the Atsu click that whatever Brax named them, they have absolutely been that same group of individuals who have been Genshin Impact's uh, most successful creators, apart from uh, Zyox and Zajef and now Doro. And what's interesting about Zyox, Zajef and Doro is they won the people over, which is why they are the only exceptions. What I mean is uh, Zyox literally made a child guide in the most peak moment of Genshin Impact fame that millions were playing it. He made a, a, a child guy. I told you I was there for everything that that literally exploded. It just hit the algorithm. And, he, and, and like within a day, bro had like 700,000 views. It was almost like Hoyo versus uh, trailers that dropped today where they just hit a million views within a day. That happened to Zyox. I shit you not from there. Exploded. Bro, bro, bro went to the moon after that. He just kept uploading, went to the moon. In fact, and this is nothing against him, I would make the argument that Zyox literally had an overnight success moment, but then he continued to put in the work to carry him. That's nothing against him. I say, I have no, like, that's not me hating. That's the God's honest truth, hell. Other people that were around probably saw it too. But um, Zajef is friends with uh, a Zyox. So of course, they are also big creators. And of course, that group affiliates with them because they're big creators who made it off of the people carrying them and not off of connections and collabs. That's very important to take note of. Doro, 44. I never seen a man get so successful off of shorts the way that he did and deliver it in such a genius tactical and business way the way that he did and be as consistent. Bro was killing it on TikTok. Bro was killing it on YouTube shorts. That shit blew him to the top another creator who got successful off of the people so it's important for you guys to understand that those three individuals to my degree of knowledge they um they were the exceptions to the argument now we can get back to the atsu where he's like because there's so many untalented unproblematic and underappreciated creators who generally are just fantastic people who've reached out in the same day atsu goes on stream and complains about ladder climbing and people people vouching for them what's so crazy about this is tech talk Tectone has always been a big creator in this space. He does not need to collaborate with anybody. He can just make his React content and continue on. He can just make content and continue on. He really can. Bro will literally give a spotlight to anyone who has content that's worth a damn. It doesn't even matter who you are. He will literally try to uplift anybody because he understands the struggle of the algorithm in climbing up that ladder. I've, I would implore you guys to let me know, have you ever seen this individual do that this is why i respect tech have you ever seen this individual or any of them try to say hey look at this content creator look what the content he's making look at this content creator in mass the way that tech does i haven't now i'm not saying they don't but shit i would love to see some evidence <laughs> it's important because it it all points towards the very phrase lost ark gatekeeping <laughs> Oh, it's got to throw in. Lost Ark is the most insane gatekeeping game I've ever seen. So I will always throw that shit under the bus. But it points towards gatekeeping. It does. Your gear's not good enough, bro. You ain't getting in on this raid, bucko. Better luck next time. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, that's, what it, that's what it screams. 
Okay, get back in it. The irony in this is that Atsu himself climbed the creator ladder, taking advantage of the fact that many of the creators in Genshin are young and blew up from the game specifically. Many of the biggest creators had no fucking idea what they were supposed to do. Yep, but how convenient. The grandpa Atsu's there to help them through it. He knows exactly what to do. Be friends with him and collab with him. Let him handle the sponsors. He'll get you to flown out to Hoyoverse events. Again, that makes so much sense. And it's honestly demonstrating Braxophone's intelligence with drawing conclusions and having substance to the conclusions that he's drawing. And I have proof that he used these people to boost his own viewership because before the Tectone drama and him becoming closer with creators, his CCV was significantly lower. Now, I will say this is a bit weird. I mean, not, not weird. This is a bit... This is a bit like on the, you really went in on the investigation, but I also understand. I get it because of the, con the, the, the context here, the significance of the claims. You really do need to make as much of an argument as you can and provide as much information as you can. So I actually, it's exceptional given the context. But uh, yeah, we're looking at uh, 900, 280, 73, 80, 92, 53, 90, 90, 153, 141. Um, 73. Atsu viewers fluctuate between 60 to 200k depending on the relevance of the characters and content, but look what happens when he collaborates with creators bigger than him, not counting non-Genshin. Uh, non 1.1 million, 1.4 million, 1, yeah, that, that is insane. That's a hell of a jump, but hey, that's, what, that's what happens when you collab. There's nothing wrong with that, but what he's saying is that ladder climbing with this context is hypocritical coming from Atsu, seeing as he does ladder climbing things. Um... The crucial thing here, and I don't know the answer to this, was Atsu friends with them before they got big or as they got big? Was he friends with them when they were already big or was he friends with them before that? Because that would, that would just dismantle this argument if they were already friends before they even got big. That would completely dismantle it. It seems cherry picked and to be fair i searched by most popular and picked some videos out but it's crazy that putting other most popular creators on your thumbnail drives more clicks if atsu would try to collaborate with other creators often it would make sense then that he would grow in the cc space it makes sense why atsu would exclude creators smaller than them then because they're not worth his time they won't drive more clicks they are rare exceptions but more often than not if you're not bigger than him he doesn't want anything to do with you it's like he's projecting and when he tells uh when he tells off other creators for being ladder climbers it's because he doesn't want someone else to get away with what he got away with Atsu has been manipulating creators and the community for a long time. Whether or not friendships are genuine now doesn't matter. The point I'm making is that they started for his personal gain. And as long as they are around, he can't fall off until they fall off. True. That's true. I'm not saying it's true, uh, like, as way, way he's painting it, but this is true. He'll also be under every single post from offline TV, massive YouTube creators and streamers acting like they've been longtime friends. So, yeah, he's got the ultimate marketing scenario set up. It's like a picture perfect scenario. All the creators I watch on YouTube and follow on Twitter because I like their content, he'd be trying so damn hard to get their attention. He's the biggest ladder climber in the entire Genshin community, and with all this talk about protecting his friends from ladder climbers, it's clear he's just worried about becoming irrelevant because someone did the same thing. Well, he doesn't have the fucking moral high ground nor authority to protect anybody from what he deems as a ladder climber. Motherfucker, that's your opinion. That's not fact. That's not the law. That's not the gold standard. You don't have the right to protect people from coming up to the top. Everyone will judge in due time whether that person is worthy of it. Not you. Again, control. Bros, bros, control freak, like symptoms. Astounding. And I think to me, the strangest thing about this is that any successful content creator knows that just because one person becomes popular doesn't mean another loss loses popularity. True. Multiple popular figures can coexist and not drag each other's views. So this incredibly strange fear of people climbing the ladder can ultimately only come from insecurity about oneself and their content. I agree. One, one billion percent. And there's nothing wrong with being insecure. It takes an incredibly strong mental to make content full time. Trust me, I know experience. What happens when the mental isn't there? Oh yeah, even somebody with such an impeccable strong fortitude as myself. <laughs> <laughs> even i go through it man you know it's just like you're constantly always evaluating yourself um there's many videos that i i almost didn't upload because i didn't think they were good but then the internet loved those videos more than any of my other videos i'm just like what the hell okay that's weird but yeah he's right he should know there's literally nothing bad that can come of somebody else sharing viewership in the space so unless he genuinely believes he will become less relevant because someone else became popular he is without a shadow of a doubt projecting Anyways, Atsu has manipulated many creators in the space into trusting him and sticking around. And maybe they are all friends now. Who knows? But what I do know is that whatever Atsu says goes. I felt Jake had a similar sentiment to Atsu about me, so I just asked him straight up. And you know what his response was? Quote, unquote, whoever Jake is. I don't really have any problems with you personally, but you know Atsu. And like, again, the same thing I told you about uh, Braxophone. 
not having it in him to be his own person in situations where you have other people, whoever Jake is, same exact trait. And I'm not going to say it's a bad thing, bro, because there, there is a, the thing, beautiful thing about life is everyone and their character, personalities, and traits is what makes this life uh, so beautiful. It's what creates society. And they all, with those traits and characteristics, whether my, my hard head ass wants to try to view it as a bad thing, they're, they're what I, they, they are the very things that identify who we are as human beings and what enables other human beings to play their role. There's roles. Not everybody can be a leader and not everybody can be a wanderer, which is not a leader or a follower. And not everybody can be a follower. They all make up this, basically this circle of life, I guess, so to speak. Lion King. It's a circle of life. All right. <laughs> Let's go back. A majority of the creators that have a problem with me have never spoken to me. Tried to get to know me or anything like that. Yeah, that, 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 that screams somebody's been whispering in their ear. They just take Atsu's word as fact. And you can even see it in the tweet he made. He subtweeted me saying I'm manipulating Tekton like I'm some big bad guy. If you're reading this tech and your source for some of these claims you're making happens to be a guide maker that bears a personal grudge against me, please be aware you are likely being manipulated. It actually, it's, it's so fascinating. If anything, you seem to be the one holding the grudge based off of these fucking text messages up here, bro. And everything that he's just explained, the one holding the grudge isn't him. He's trying to reconcile. He's trying to be cool. You are the one who's holding a grudge, my boy. That's crazy. <clears throat> okay, I'm not reading all that. But in reality, the manipulation has come from Atsu telling Tekton to DM him instead so he can clear things up. Why would he go to him when he can just go directly to the source? He spun this awful narrative about me for a long time, and I still don't know what the fuck any of it is about. Or what I've done wrong. The worst part about all of this is that I didn't want to say anything because the narrative that I can't be trusted would be proven correct. Because for some reason, in the content creation space, it's better to never express any problems at all and just talk shit behind people's backs. Oh, Brax, you, you know I'm going to agree with that shit. You knew it. You knew I was going to read this and agree with that. You, you put that sentence in there for me. You're goddamn right. My voice is getting raspy. <clears throat> We might have to, we might have to make this video into two videos because my voice is already getting raspy. I might have to take a break, get some water and then make a, a follow up video on Atsu's response. It's why every take he has is the middle ground. This is really bad, but I also understand why it's not bad and it's really nuanced. Oh, he would do anything to not look bad. Okay, I see. Some creators would rather have a clean slate from telling people to shut up rather than just not cause harm in the first place. Atsu has been one of those people to tell me he will do anything Oh, wait, Atsu has been one of those people to me. There we go. Okay. He will do anything to not look bad. It's why every take he has is the middle ground. This is really bad, but I also understand why it's not bad. And it's really nuanced. Yeah, it's, it's a tactic to get gain the favor of the people because the people are so naive to believe that you should never have a side. And uh, that's the internet. A, a bunch of people on the internet are just incredibly immature and they don't understand why it's important to have a side and not be a fence sitter all the fucking time. The biggest way to grow though is to keep an objective fence sitter take because fence sitter doesn't align yourself with either side. So the, the, the people for the most part, the mass majority can continue supporting you because once you pick a side, the dumb fucks who think you have to, have, uh, you can't like be on a side and not be cool. They're gonna stop supporting you. So it makes sense. <clears throat> by appealing to more people you get more people to like you uh atsu likes to play it safe he wants to appeal to the most general people yep his tweet at tecton is his way of trying to make all my claims look false Whoo! this is way okay we're almost there god damn Rax, you sure didn't make me work today bro i was afraid to speak up about anything and truthfully i still am i know for a fact i'm going to be harassed like the last person he mistreated who almost took their own life by the end of it due to continuously com community bullying listen guys Tekton said the same thing. I don't agree with neither one of you, okay? Sorry. Both of you, I think y'all reaching like a motherfucker. You can't... I, I, I'll admit, there's a degree of influence on whether somebody takes their own life, but ultimately that decision is up to them. Okay? It, it, you can't try and pin somebody almost taking their life on somebody else. Guys, grow the fuck up, okay? With all due respect. You can't say that person is why he almost took his life. No, it's not. Okay, there are. That is such a fucking multifaceted and complex scenario that has so many life scenarios that played out over the course of their life. Y'all are reaching with that shit. All right, let, let's fucking let's simmer down. Like I like to say, let's simmer down.
place. Ultimately, my mental has been in the gutter for a while due to all of this. Again, part of that is also your own fault. You have to stay, take accountability for that. I, 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 won't, I won't lie. No, definitely. He has a lot to do with this, but we can't put it all on him. That's, it's important to establish that. My friends can tell you how bad this whole thing has hurt me, but I was ready to take it to the grave because I was that afraid to have all the community and creators turn their backs on me. He told this to me. It's why I stayed silent to respect his wishes. Uh, and there are going to be people even beyond the Genshin community that will never speak with me or give me a chance because of whatever false narrative Atsu has been spinning behind the scenes. Bridges I never knew existed are already burned. All because the biggest ladder climber in Genshin called me a ladder climber. <laughs> You can tell Brax is pissed. I make good content. I don't need to befriend you in order to succeed. I just wanted to make friends. People I can relate to who are playing the game. That is content. He's This is the biggest dick, big dick move, Brax. Right here. You're absolutely right. Brax is already eating. Brother is already making good money. Of course. So to sit there and say he's a ladder climber when he's already... What do you think he's doing at the conventions with you, bro? He's already eating. He's just trying to make friends. What the fuck are you on about? It's not like he has two subs. He's like, hey, man, I want to hang out with you guys. Bro's up. He's already there at that level. <laughs> it's insane. The, the timing feels too coincidental to be an accident. How long are we? A one hour and 11? Holy shit. I've been driven out so many content creator spaces online due to his warnings to others. Yeah. See, this, this is where I draw that line. For once, I feel as though I found a ground of peers who trust me and treat me like an equal and who would support me if I needed them. And now Atsu is attacking them too, attempting to warn them about me as well. Why can't I exist outside of his sphere? Am I not allowed to have any friends at all? Ultimately, I just want to know what it is I've allegedly done wrong through every step of my ostra uh, ostracization. I hate that word. I have never once been told what it is I have done to harm or wrong anyone outside of posting a picture with a stranger in it. Is that it? what I did so badly to destroy his opinion on me to the point where I now feel I am unwelcome in nearly every Holyverse creator space? If not, what? What did I do? How am I supposed to change, to grow, or to apologize if I don't know what I did? How am I supposed to be better? Or am I not allowed to do uh, better because Achu just doesn't want me around? Yeah. Mm -mm. Bro has done the one rule I told you you cannot do. You don't fuck with a man's livelihood. You don't fuck with a man's bag. And that is clearly seems to be what he is doing. I do... Uh, look forward. I'll, I'll finish this to reading his shit. We're going to take a break. This is, this is going to be part one. I'll just tell you. I do look forward to reading his shit, but as of now, yeah, it's not looking good for this guy. It's not. I also have tried multiple times. To, to, the only time you fuck with a man's livelihood is when you know they're doing something that's not wrong. I mean, it's not right. My bad. That's not right. If they're doing something that is clearly like unethical and immoral to create income for themselves. Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Fuck their livelihood. Anyways, I tried to talk with him in person, but he generally avoids being anywhere near me. And when I spoke to Jake at GamesCon Germany uh, to see if he knew where Atsu was, Jake said, I know for a fact he does not want to talk to you. I also asked the Hoyover staff that I know has worked with both of us in the past if they could connect us in some way to figure out what the actual issue was and maybe at least fix this he shed, she shed disaster. But they were unsuccessful in opening a dialogue. Huh. So it's so funny how, he keep, how Atsu said he has a grudge. When every single thing in this in this shit I read points to him trying to make up and, and just clear the bullshit. Wild. All right. Uh, and ended up ghosting me for a few months because they were unsatisfied with outcome while trying to find other ways to solve things. He has avoided me since the start, hated me since I told friends about his strange distrust, uh, talked shit about me to all of his friends as the ringleader, destroyed potential for me to meet and befriend others in the space, and has been unwilling to try and resolve things. But you know what he is open to doing? Trying to convince the new friends I have that I'm a bad person. This has all started as me trying to make friends and ended with me having to literally leave Genshin to find some. I would have never said a word about it again if Atsu hadn't brought it up again. I genuinely can't believe he thinks I'm that evil scheming to destroy the genshin community and its creators via tech tone absolute insanity you've already destroyed my mental health and relations with plenty of people i haven't talked about this with anyone in months leave me alone holy fuck all right i've heard everything i've needed to hear um i'm gonna do a part two but i'm gonna take a break <laughs> that was long-winded as i told y'all at the beginning of the video this shit stresses me out i don't like talking at length like this but uh yeah it's not looking good i think i as as i see things right now Brax, brother, you're, I'm, thank you for speaking up, man. And you, based off of the voice call you had with me and based off of this, this is all as genuine as it can possibly be. Unless this guy provides substantial evidence that you're a piece of shit dirtbag that deserves this isolation and exclusion from these, uh, you know, these activities. 
it, it seems to be to the contrary that he is in fact these things. But I look forward to seeing his response.